Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Wieben and I am a Canadian artist creating historically accurate portraits of Victorian dinosaurs. In this video I will be sharing the full process of illustrating an Amargosaurus mailman in the style of J.C. Leyendecker. Before I do, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at, at FossilFollies to see more original paintings of extinct costumed critters. This video will show you how I go from the tiniest germ of an idea, barely bigger than a coin, a real coin, to a fully rendered digital illustration. Stationary Voyager is part of a series of paintings that I've entitled The Fossil Follies Collection. They are illustrated moments featuring the foibles of a cast of dinosaur characters set during the Victorian era. Through this series, I'll be exploring themes of social anxiety, parenthood, and other conundrums using a cast of dinosaur archetypes inhabiting a fictional Victorian era urban environment. The collection showcases characters of diverse stature contorting themselves into the rigid social framework of the Victorian era, a period renowned for both its manic optimism and indestructible hubris. Indestructible, like the Titanic. On this channel, I'll be sharing the process I use to craft narrative artwork for illustration and visual storytelling, as well as my transition into building a freelance illustration career almost from scratch. I approach the series from a background as a museum archivist and costume designer for theater, building on a specialization in researching fashion and its relationship to identity to now becoming the world's foremost expert on the history of dress, for dinosaurs. As I said at the top of this video, this painting was inspired by the works of J.C. Leyendecker, in particular his Sailor Girl painting, shown here. In general, my inspiration for the series sits between late 19th century oil paintings and Golden Age magazine illustrators like Rockwell and Leyendecker. Because of the graphic quality I wanted for this piece, I leaned harder into one specific reference than I normally like to. But even then, I had a catalogue of about 50 images that helped me inform how I painted this piece. I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. Once the pencil drawing was done, I started inking it in Photoshop. Inking is a technique I adopted into my work process after taking a few comic book creation classes early in my illustration career. While I'll end up painting over a lot of the work I'm doing here, I still find this step helps me to make bold value choices as I move into the color phase. It works like a rehearsal for the values so that I'm not trying to do two jobs at once when I start adding color later. It was a step I started skipping in my last three paintings, much to my own detriment. So why exactly did I bring it back? On this one, my goal is to use this painting as a logo for my Fossil Follies company. I also wanted a black and white version of it that I could use in places where the subtlety of the painting is lost. I'm also planning on turning it into a rubber stamp, which I can then use to brand paper bags or parcels once my web store is up. You can see what I have now at www.fossilfollies.art. I found this inking phase helped immensely when it came down to painting, so I guess it's just a permanent part of my artistic DNA now. It's actually really amazing how much easier it was to paint once I'd done the line art on this one. I think in the past I've been adding almost a week to my process by not doing this because it really forces me to get into the, the pencil drawing and do make really precise decisions about where exactly a figure or an object ends. So it's been a really helpful part of this process for me. Kind of at this point, you can see me filling in the, the big shapes of this in, what, in a technique that's known as flatting. I was really surprised 
after this, how close to the final it looked, which is a bit deceptive because it still took me about 100 hours to paint. I've got about 84 hours of footage from these screenshots that I'm showing here, and then several hours more of, of little finicky bits or short painting sessions that I didn't turn the camera on for. These spines were really interesting because they actually point to a very specific uh, dinosaur species. Uh, for a lot of this painting, I was referring to it as a Camarasaurus, which kind of has these little details. But as I researched more, I realized it was more of an Amargosaurus. You'll see later as I start to add two different uh, branches of these bikes. It just kind of gives it a bit more depth as you're looking at it. And you'll see I do kind of a different style of line art on it to show the painting receding into the background.
As you watch this, you might be wondering why I don't seem to be using any digital shortcuts. Honestly, my preference would be to paint these in traditional medium. My go-to is Holbein acrylic wash, but I'm also gearing up to do large-scale oil paintings soon. Just working on renovating my studio so I have, have the room. The main reason I've been working digitally is because I'm balancing art creation with having a young child. So the transition from painting in Photoshop to the many meals and nap times that interrupt my schedule has been easier than leaving traditional paints when I'm busy. One thing I've been thinking a lot about lately is how important it is to slow down and trust the process. I used to despair if I couldn't finish a painting quickly. That ironically also caused me to quit too early and not finish anything. On this series, I've decided to put in as many hours as it takes to be happy with my work, just to see what it takes to get to the end of the process. I started tracking hours spent on a little post-it note next to my tablet. I concluded that it takes about 100 to 120 hours for me to finish any given illustration, which honestly in the scheme of things is not that long. I committed to painting everything by hand. No Photoshop textures or digital hacks. Not that I'm against them, but for me, my goal is to produce digital work that looks like a classical painting. And if I were painting it classically, I would be committed to rendering every piece of this painting one brush stroke at a time. Not only is every wrinkle and scale painted bit by bit, but I also realized I was painting brush strokes. Like, not only was I painting the figure, a dinosaur delivering mail, but I was also painting the painting of a dinosaur delivering mail. I worked hard to make sure each stroke looked like a traditional paint stroke, so I could paint little shadows and highlights over top of the flat digital stroke I laid down, as if it was a real oil painting being scanned or photographed. You'd have the texture of the painting lit from one direction or the other, casting shadows over this uh, sculptural texture. On a certain level, it would have been far easier just to paint this in oil because those style details would have been automatically there as part of the merit of the materials. So many of my finished and planned dinosaur paintings have these little pterosaur creatures as part of the storytelling. These funny little voyeurs watching the, the main action. I feel like they're an analog for my new identity as a father. Always being aware of a diminutive companion following you everywhere, trying to learn from you as you yourself aren't entirely sure you're providing a lesson worth learning. They popped up in my art the instant my child was born, and I've been leaning into it to see what they mean to me. As far as I can tell, they function a bit like Snoopy in a Charlie Brown cartoon. They have caused problems when I'm painting, though, which is that I tend to leave them till the end. Despite usually being the focal point of the painting, their small size keeps tricking me into thinking they'll be easy. And once I get to them, that's never been the case. Uh, it messed me up on my last painting, The Bell Hop, in which I ended up spending as much time on the tiny Pteranodon character as the larger Edmontosaurus, despite her being only about an inch or two tall 
in the final painting. I don't feel like I fixed that on this one. I still ended up leaving the, the pteranodon till the end. But it's something I'm working on and trying to address earlier in the painting process. Always paint your focal point first. <laughs> this sandwich was one of my favorite pieces of this painting to paint because I drew it directly referencing a sandwich from one of my favorite Disney movies, 101 Dalmatians. You've discovered me at the beginning of my freelance artistic career. So please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also help directly support the creation of more videos like this by joining my community on Patreon, link in the description. There I share more of the behind the scenes content and previews of upcoming work. By backing for as little as $1 per month, you will also get exclusive voting rights on which dinosaurs I should paint next, products I should make, and more. Just like a tiny board member for a tiny company of one. So why did I decide to make a YouTube channel now? After painting for just around five years. I've been spending a lot of time creating in my studio alone. And I was starting to feel isolated and looking for a way to connect directly with an audience. What that meant to me was starting to showcase more of my thought process behind paintings and sharing more of what I'm bringing to them as an artist, rather than just putting them out on the internet. I think something I've been very cognizant of lately is the emergence of AI-generated art. And I've been thinking about what kind of value can I bring as a real human creator that computers can never replicate. And I think what that is is the genuine human connection that you feel when you see a piece of art and you realize that there was someone truly behind it, having the same feelings that you do about any given subject. It makes you feel seen, and like your experience in the world is, is valid, it's shared, and it's important. It can be really isolating having those feelings alone. And I think that's been what I've been feeling working on these paintings in my studio by myself for so long. Is that I recognize the themes in them, but until you really put them out into the world and discover that there's a community that's had these same feelings, and that you can grow a community around this catalyst of visual arts is really incredible. Thank you so much for checking out my video today. It's been a pleasure to finally share 
my behind the scenes process. And I look forward to producing more videos in the future. If you'd like to see more paintings of dapper dinosaurs, just subscribe to this channel and check me out on Instagram at Fossil Follies. And here we have the final 600 layers of the digital painting. I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, have a great day. Bye. Thank you.